September 17th, yeah. you returned to the UFC cage. And originally this fight against Marina was on July 9th. You know, what did they tell you? Why did they postpone this fight for two months? Uh, I'm not sure. Mick texted me, um, undisclosed reasons. You know, you really got to respect the UFC and Mick for keeping everybody's privacy. So, um, and I didn't inquire, um, just said that she was out. And we pitched a few dates back and forth and locked in on September 17th. Marina, you know, she's been around the UFC for a while. Is there like one performance that kind of stood out for you? Like something that like, got your attention from her um yeah when Mick first offered me the name she wasn't anybody I was particularly watching per se I know she's got some fights in 115 she's um been in the UFC a while um the last fight that jumped out at me would have been her most recent one um I believe she fought in uh, arm uh, arm triangle another kind of young 125er um I believe on an Abu Dhabi card or something like that so um, I know she got to finish her last fight. Um, and obviously, once I got the name, I started doing some more studying. And, you know, here we are. Yeah. So the studying, that's what interests me the most, how fighters study other fighters. Do you go really deep into it? Are you watching film like every day or, or multiple times a week? How do you do it? No, I, I do like a glance over when I first get the name. And uh, um, I leave most of the hardcore film study up to my coaches. I do watch film. Um, I actually probably study more film when I'm cornering another fighter than when for my own fight. Uh, <laughs> uh, mostly because, like, you know, film study is, you know, you're watching the, some of the best stuff that the other person's doing. So I like to leave it up to my head coach for my fights. But when I study the corner, like I corner Chukagan, I corner other amateurs, I study, like, film for hours on end. But when it's me, I get a little nervous, and I'm like, all right, she's going to do – a low kick, I kind of get a feel for their style. Are they a grappler? Are they a striker? You know, what kind of propensities do they have? And then, like, that's enough for me. And I kind of let my coaches dig into the real hardcore film study. Did that ever, like, bite you in the ass in the past, you know, like watching too much of your opponent where it just kind of got into your head a little bit? Um, I don't think there's any particular incident that, like, per se bit me in the ass. But it's, like, one of two things. I either watch it and I'm like, like, I think she's better than she is. I watch it, and I don't think she's as good as she probably is. So either one, I'm like, look, um, for some reason, I can remove myself from it a lot more when I'm studying for another fighter. But for me, I do think, I like, one way or another, I, I, I don't think it's the best for my mindset. So like I said, I get a good one. Like, all right, she got a head and arm. She likes to kick. And, like, that that's kind of it. And then I'm focusing on my skill set for the rest of camp. That's what's best for me and my mentality. Like, okay, if I focus on what I'm best at and where I want the fight to go, because um, my style doesn't per se change opponent to opponent. Um, and that's what I don't want. I don't want to look at film study and be like, oh, like, I have to watch out for this now the whole time. I, I don't like that mentality. Like, be defensive, be offensive, and stick to my game. And that's usually what wins me fights. So um, that's kind of my mentality around my film studying. But, you know, a little bit is okay, but I can't do too much. <laughs> Skill set wise, what did you see in the film? Um, I think Marina is very well-rounded. She's been using her ground game a lot. Um, I noticed that she switched to American Top Team maybe a couple of fights ago. Um, so maybe that's the reason for sort of um, adding to her skills. I know she's got, like, a Ukrainian boxing background. Um, so she's going to be well-rounded and tough. And um, that's that's about, you know, the most I need from it. She's going to box well and, and probably grapple kind of clean, too. So. Yeah, her last fight was uh, against a former teammate at American Top Team. You know, they had a little back and forth, a little beef, you know what I mean? And, well, they don't train together anymore. Yeah, okay. Because the, the other girl was European as well, right? Yes, yes, fight. yes. They had, like, this in-gym beef, and then she, one, uh, Maria, the other Maria, Agapova, left, and then they fought, and she beat her. But my question is, you know, when you have, like, former teammates fighting each other, you know, especially, like, at the highest level – and and you got all those sessions that you train together you know outside of, outside of athletic capability what do you learn about your training partners by being in the room with them so much um the thing training just isn't the same as a fight like you're, you like in my camp we train hard we spar hard um you want to push your cardio so that you can get um the best feel and preparation for a fight um but the fight is just different you're you're the difference between a spar session and a fight is, is night and day. There's all kinds of mental aspects behind it. There's a physical preparation for it. There's the weight cut. There's the the lights and the – there's the whole thing. So I do – you do see a lot in MMA, especially with these big teams. One fighter leaves and they end up fighting each other. Um, 
I think that you can learn sort of the overall style of another person, but I don't think you're going to be able to learn so much that just because of that sparring session, you're going to win. Uh, like me and Caitlin train together all the time. She's more of a striker and I'm more of a grappler. Like that's about like as much as you're going to learn. And there's going to be things that you try and spar that you might not do in a fight. Like in spar, I'm trying all kinds of funky stuff just because it's sparring, you know, but in the fight, I'm, I'm sticking to my game plan. Um, so I think that former teammates fighting adds an interesting aspect to it. It's fun for the fans. It's really good marketing, but I think fighters kind of hype up as much learning from that, that time as possible. I think it's really, I mean, you see it all the time. You, I think it, what was it? Like, Cody Garbrandt and TJ Dillashaw, like they were releasing film on each other. Like fight night came, you know, one guy's gonna win regardless of who trained, who beat up who in practice, you know. Now going back to your last fight, um, when you assess everything, the fight, everything involved, what did you think of what happened? Um, I mean, shit happens, man. I got caught with a good shot. Um, it's well placed, well timed. Um, I think the fight was going my way up until that point. Um, it was my first finish of my career and I've had a long storied career. I fought my resume. I'm really proud of my resume. I'm really proud of the fights I've put out. And, you know, that's just kind of what happens It's you know, you play in the game long enough. It's just bound to happen. Yeah. You, you know, you've been thrown to the wolves like quick, you know what I mean? Like instantly. And it's pretty amazing that you have continued to swim among the sharks. You know what I mean? Cause a lot of girls, guys, whatever fighters, they sink. Inst like you see guys now come into the UFC, two fights are gone. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. ruthless now. It's a tough job. It's a tough job, and the sport is just getting better and faster mm -hmm. um, every year. It's growing rapidly. Fighters are getting better. Fighters are getting younger. Um, and yeah, it's 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 tough. And I'm proud. I'm proud. Mm -hmm. I'm still in here. I'm still yeah. swimming. That's great. And did did the weight cut affect you in that fight? Um, no, I mean, the weight cuts are tough for me. I'm, I'm just sort of one of them in between size fighters. Um, I think more for me, it was just a little bit of a, stra a, st a strategy error, a technique error. Um, I've watched the, the film over and over again. Um, you know, I was rushing in and walked right into a good kick. So, um, my cardio felt fine up until that point. So it wasn't like if it was a cardio thing and I was like <laughs> dying the whole time. We could say that, but I don't think the weight cut played a, a cardio factor in it, no. In in the sport, a lot of people will look at the weight cut or look at the weigh-ins and say, oh, this person's drained or this person had a tough cut. And then before the fight even happens, they're already thinking that your cardio is not going to be good. That's what, like, automatically people think because of a weight cut. But, you know, that's we all cut weight. We all cut a lot of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, I think that's kind of... Uh, an excuse for fans and viewers we all cut weight we all cut weight and it sucks and all of us got to rehydrate i've had certainly a lot worse weight cuts than the one i have versus melissa gato i've had rough weight cuts at 35 you know they're just you know i think it's easy for fans to say oh you know the weight cut zapped them like fights are hard man fight a fight is tiring no matter what you do the weight cut could go perfectly well you're it's tiring out there um, so I think it's easy to, to sort of fans and media to be like, oh, you know, the weight cut went bad. Maybe that plays on that fighter's cardio. But, I mean, a lot of things play on cardio. Getting kicked, punching the other person, you're grappling, you're standing. So all of that kind of plays as well. And that, that fight was December. You know, what did you do for the first half of uh, 2022? Well, I'm just training, saving, um, getting back. I've, I've just spent a lot of time, like, coaching, too. Um, my sister's young, she's 23 and she just got in the, um, Muay Thai. So she's like doing amateur Muay Thai right now. My teammates, Caitlin Chukagian. So I've cornered her twice since my fight in December. Um, she's going to start her camp soon. Um, so just being, you know, living life and, and just training, going, going to work every day at the gym and, um, just waiting, waiting for the next, next call. And here we are. That's great to see the the coaching as well you know like you're you're kind of like laying out something for the future is that something you're doing right now uh a lot of people tease me because um you know i get a lot of feedback from fighters that say like you know you're really good corner you're really good coach and is that what you want to do next um i'm like the reluctant <laughs> i'm like the reluctant cornerman in that aspect um it is fun and and i am enjoying it quite a bit um but i'm not sure if it's something i do as a career after fighting 
Um, you know, I want to spend some time with my family coaching. I think coaching requires more time and dedication than being a fighter does. Cause if, if you're a coach, you've got a stable of like, even if you got four or five guys or girls in the UFC, right? Like for a fighter, I got one camp, I go fight and I go home and I relax. Like for a coach, you got to be there every day. You got multiple guys, multiple times you're training and traveling a lot further. Um, I think the stress is a little bit different when you're a coach because, you think you got this kid's like safety in your hands and you, so it's kind of its own interesting, but stressful situation also. So I'm not sure if I, you know, coach full time. I told my sister and I told Caitlin for them, I'll do it. Um, I'm not sure if it's something I'll do long term. I don't know. Yeah. Are you going to go to Paris? Is that where they're fighting? Uh, Caitlin just got rescheduled for Abu Dhabi. Oh, okay. Yes, I'll okay. Be. You'll be in yeah, Abu Dhabi. I mean, yeah, I'm in for Caitlin on that one right now. So, um, yeah, her camp starts soon, and um, I'll be sparring and in her corner and whenever she asks me. Yeah, that's great. You know, flowing together, that's 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 phenomenal. Now, any cross training did you do in that time? Uh, no, I've been in Jersey, mm -hmm. um, training with Mark Henry, Caitlin Skagen, um, Ryan Cafaro. Um, no, I didn't get to I didn't get to travel around too much. Now, the last time. Uh, 115 or went up to 125 and faced you. You finished them in the first round. Marina is a 150. -er. She's been at 125 for a little bit, but still, she you know she she fought at 115. She's not. I don't think she's as big, right? Have you seen her around? Is she big? Um, no. I I gotta guess any woman that can make 115 is just gonna be a little bit smaller than me. I couldn't make 115 to save my life. I'd have to I'd have to lose a leg. So I'm assuming her frame is gonna be. I so I assume her frame is gonna be a little bit smaller. When I, I haven't seen her in person, when I see her film and I see her photos, she looks shredded. She looks long, um, but I have to assume that her frame is gonna be a little bit small for this division. So how do you see yourself taking her out? Getting your, of course you want a performance bonus, right? Of course, every time. Yeah. <laughs> every, um, the same way I do all my fights, man. We get to get it to the ground. I'm a ground shark. I love boxing. I love standing up. I love the striking aspect. Um, I do believe my bread and butter is on the ground. Every one of my fights, I've scored a takedown, and uh, we're going to keep that pattern going on September 17th. You do love the boxing, but uh, you do have a head kick knockout, right? From I do have a head kick knockout, yeah, from the <laughs> old fighter. Um, you know, I've been searching for that illustrious, take, uh, illustrious knockout again, um, but I, I just... You know, I can't even help myself. Sometimes I'm shooting in the middle of a fight, and I'm like, oh, I was going to stand up this time. I'm <laughs> Like taking the girl down um but we'll see we'll see we'll see i would love another one yeah great great and and i think this fight is very pivotal because you guys are both probably right at the edge of the top 15 a win could get you one of the fighters you know in that you know with a number next to their name do you feel like this is one of those type of fights for sure for sure i would love a number next to my name um i, I think this fight is tough i think when mick made this matchup he knew just that, that both of us were, are right there knocking on the door of that ranked, ranked part of the division. So um, a win certainly puts one of us uh, uh, ranked. It certainly should. All right, one last uh, topic outside of fighting. You posted earlier this year about Brittany Griner's situation in Russia. How disturbing is that right now? Man, it's, it's so sick, man. And I appreciate you asking because I feel like in the MMA community that that piece of news has been pretty quiet. Um, I, I, she's been sentenced to nine years and as an American citizen, it, it's kind of twofold. It's, it's disturbing that it took so long for that traction to get picked up for people to really start talking about it and really start caring. Um, it's disturbing that, you know, she hasn't been brought home and of course she's locked up over, you know, this much THC, if she had it or not, it's this much, you know, and people at home are being locked up for weed just the same way right in the United States so I hope that this brings not only awareness to Brittany Griner not only it brings her home but sort of I hope it helps that we start to reflect back here home on our own laws as well um in certain states you can be locked up just like Brittany Griner is um I really hope that our president and um the other politicians in this country can do more to bring her home I'm deeply saddened by the news as a gay black masculine presenting woman it really feels like it hits close to home I'm an athlete I travel I smoke weed like it, it feels like that could have been you know like that could have been any one of us so it, it's kind of scary to think and I pray for her every day I hope she gets home soon and and the and even worse is that she's being used as a pawn now you know like yeah. in politics 
Yeah, in politics. And it's kind of like, you kind of hope that that'll help her get home soon, but kind of realize just how sick it is and, and how serious this situation in Russia is. And, you know, for me, kind of the lack of severity our country's taking in it. Like, this is a bold move. This is a bold move. Like, you know what I mean? The president of another country arrests and falsely charge, like, it basically falsely arrests and charges a woman nine years. And, like, we're all just kind of like an Olympian. You know, imagine if that happened to Serena Williams or um, LeBron James or any other, like, imagine if it happened to one of the UFC champions. I feel like. Imagine if it happened to John Jones or Colby Covington. Like, people would lose their mind. Um, and it's it's wild, man. I, I sometimes don't know what to think. feels helpless. Um, but you got to hope that it brings her home and also brings awareness to the many, many other issues that are entwined in her arrest. When I, like, think deeper about it, she's been uh, playing basketball in Russia, I think, since 2015. So she's been yep. going there year after year after year. They've been inviting her back, you know. And it, it almost feels like she's probably been taking those cartridges, if she has been taking the cartridges, before. You know what I mean? It was almost just like a, it almost seems like it wasn't a big thing to her. And then yeah. this time, political climate yeah. is crazy. She goes to yeah. Russia, you know, yeah. things happen. Yeah. And it does. You kind of do. I do believe that she probably was relaxing. It's, it's, you know, you go there every year. It's part of the thing. I go to Vegas every year. Like <laughs> you pack your bag, you know, you pack your bag for your gym every day. It's sort of she's off to work that morning. You know, just imagine being off to work every morning like you are, doing the same thing you've done day after day, and then you get scooped up and you never get home. Like it's, it's really, really sad to think. And she went over there. Like you know, I hear a lot of buzz online that. Oh, she knew the country was bad. Why would she go? She was she was taken before Putin invaded, at least two weeks before. And there wasn't a big, you know, there wasn't a lot of hoopla on the news about what was going on. Um, so I think it's kind of unfair to blame her for that, too. Like, you know, there's there's stuff going on in Brazil and we go fight there. And there's stuff, like, you know, because I think about it, if I was a fighter and they sent me somewhere, I'd probably be like, yeah, you know, I'd go. No one's going to be like, let me pass up on this cool million bucks, you know. And she gets she gets taken, and that's you know really sad, really scary. Dennis Rodman, they're gonna send him to Russia now to free Britney. I'm I'm just like, how did Dennis Rodman get involved? I think he's I think he's sending himself. Um, okay. I was actually just reading that just before just before we started, I was just reading on that. Mm. I'm pretty sure he's sending himself. Okay. I don't think I don't think <laughs> official asked him to go. Um, you know, but who knows what's gonna come of that. Uh, if Dennis Rodman got her home, I'd be happy with it. That would just sort of be a, a mockery, unfortunately, to um, the whole system. But uh, apparently he's sending himself, and if he can do it, great. And hopefully he doesn't, like, like, ruffle any feathers while he's over there or anything like that. Yeah, that, you're exactly right. If he could get it done, get it done. But then it becomes a mockery of the pol politics or politicians because the politicians couldn't get it done. So Yeah, that, the, I <laughs> believe the political memes will run yeah crazy, crazy. if rob gets Brittany grinder uh, yeah it's gonna be a silly day i mean I, I would be happy but i would be like bro what is going on He's right now <laughs> i would it's crazy yeah it's like when trump became president everybody was like what is going on with the world i mean trump's president and dennis rodman can negotiate with putin like all right you know I'm just here trying to win a fight. Yeah, <laughs> for real. At the end of the day, you know, hopefully they, they free Britney, get her back home safe, and uh, yeah, and she probably will never be going to Russia ever again. I, I doubt it. I doubt it. But I hope she's safe, and, you know, I hope she's home soon. Yeah. Well, September 17th, UFC Fight Night. Sarge, thank you so much for the time. It was a great first chat, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing many more. I hope so, too. Thank you for having me, and uh, we'll talk soon.